Savior Jesus Christ. At this time now, we're going to open up our worship service. We're going to go forth with prayer, and after that, we're going to have our scripture reading. And we're going to be led in prayer today by a very special guest, Brother Anthony Arrington. So let's, amen, position ourselves for prayer at this time. Good morning, church. Let us pray. Thank you, Holy Father, for allowing us uh, another day of uh, grace and mercy. Thank you for allowing us to uh, celebrate uh, Christ uh, with our loved ones, yes, where others didn't have a chance, they're already celebrating. Um, ask that you um, bless everyone here, as well as the viewers out there, that, uh, that they will be touched by the, the speaker and, and um, what God has allowed and put in their heart to uh, speak to us. Um, and uh, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. At this time now, we're going to have our scripture reading by Brother Bondell. Good morning, church. Good morning. I'll be reading from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 through for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice. From the time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. May God the blessing to the readers, ears, and doers of his most holy word. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. At this time now, we're going to turn you back into the hands of our praise and worship team. Oh, oh, oh. 
begin to position yourselves. Get yourselves ready to hear the word of God on today. Amen. We have a capable speaker. She's coming at this time now to share with you what God has given unto her. So without further ado, I want to, amen, share with you, amen, this young lady whom I've had the pleasure of knowing now for over 35 years. Amen. We have been married for that long, but I've known her 
longer than that. So we bless God for all that he has done and all that he is yet doing in her life. Amen. So at this time now, amen, I think that we're postured and ready to hear from none other than the First Lady of Living Epistle Church of God in Christ, First Lady Pamela Price. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thanks. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the things that he has done. We just got through celebrating Christ Mass. Christmas. Christ Mass. You know, I find it very interesting that although you got many people that don't want to believe in the Messiah, the Son of God, but God somehow makes them pause uh, in celebration for the Christ Mass. Mm -hmm. And there's a blindness to what they're doing. They're uh, going out buying gifts and they're going out doing different things, having to bow down basically uh, and, and uh, humble themselves for this particular uh, pause, this particular uh, Christ Mass that God is making the world celebrate. Amen. Mm -hmm. And you got some devil's countries uh, that won't <laughs> humble themselves to that and they pay for it. Amen. And I'm sure many of you have uh, enjoyed the food um, that um, someone cooked and enjoyed that. And we got so stuffed. And even now I'm so full <laughs> from yesterday. We eat one meal, but it seems to carry over into the next day, the next day, right? Mm -hmm. And you just feel just so stuffed. I don't know what that is, <laughs> but we stuffed. But you know, we ate and we enjoyed uh, the the food from yesterday, from the feast. But you know, we have to come back and get some spiritual food also. Yes, yes, yes. We have to get that spiritual food that's going to keep us alive and keep us going on. So the Lord has. Uh, given something to me and I'm going to try to relay the message because sometimes when the Lord drops something in your spirit, uh, it can be very difficult to communicate that to others. But the Lord has been pressed on me to try uh, to get this point across. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the fig tree. Mm -hmm. The fig tree. I know somebody's telling me I probably need to read our sayings with it. A uh, piece of paper it was up. Is it, is it up here? Okay. All right, this is my Bible. This the, is my Bible? The Holy Word of God. The Holy Word of God. It is my food. It is my food. Water. Water. Light. Light. light strength. Strength. And final authority. And final authority. Through it. Through it. I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed. And reconciled unto God. And reconciled unto God. Now as I hear the Word of God. Now as I hear the Word of God. Faith will come. Faith will come. Through faith. Through faith. Salvation is mine. Salvation is mine. Through faith. Through faith. Healing is mine. Healing is mine. Through faith. Through faith. Deliverance is mine. Deliverance is mine. Through faith. Through faith. Prosperity is mine. Mind. Prosperity is mine. All of God's blessings. All of God's blessings. All of God's blessings. All of God's blessings. All of them. All of them are mine. They are mine. Praise be to God. All of God's blessings, they really are mine for me to get them. Amen. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. And I want to get them. I want to uh, take advantage of the life, the God kind of life uh, that I have in me, that God has given me. You know, it would be a shame. Uh, that you have the God kind of life he's now given. If you accepted Jesus as your Lord and, and he's your, your Lord and Savior, it would be a shame that you, are, uh, you have the potential to enjoy the abundant life and you don't. Mm. <laughs> it would be a shame, uh, you know, because you know, I can understand why uh, God is going to have a ceremony in heaven or uh, giving out awards because uh, uh, there are going to be some that really take advantage of the God kind of life. And then there's some that just uh, neglected it and just chose to just not capitalize or, or embrace what God has given to the believer. If you will, turn to Mark, the 11th chapter. We're going to dive into uh, this, this point that Jesus makes as far as the, field, the fig tree. 
and some things I never saw before. And I mean, when my eyes were open, I was like, oh, okay, well, praise the Lord. Now, now let me just uh, prep you just a little bit as to what's happening here. Jesus is just got through uh, uh, going on. Remember, he got on the donkey, the triumphal entry. entry. Remember, the people were throwing things down and he rode on the donkey. He had just uh, did that and the people shouted out, Hosanna. And so afterwards, Jesus and his disciples had left Bethany, I believe it is. And, and while traveling, after leaving Bethany, while traveling, Jesus has an encounter with a fig tree. Now, I, I, I had pastor and uh, the engineers here, the technical guys here to uh, put me up two pictures because I, I, I want you to just uh, at least look at what a fig tree looks like so you would be able to follow me today. So just right now, we're just going to put up what the figs look like. I think on that one, you got one that was ripe, and then the others were still kind of uh, needing to ripen. So y'all got that first one up? Okay, so that's what uh, that looks like, what the fruit looked like, all right? And so, so now I want to show you what a fig tree looks like. And I want you to pay attention to the leaves, how it has grown and how it has developed and how beautiful this particular tree is. Now, uh, now you can come on out of that. Now, while Jesus was traveling, he gets, he gets hungry and we're going to read the scripture. Uh, and, and this fig tree that ends up being a major teachable moment for us who has ears to hear. So he's going to have an encounter with this tree and it's going to be a teachable moment for all of us today. Amen. So if you will open your Bible to the 11th chapter and we're going to 10 through 14. I will pass it to read and we're going to stop right there. Mark 11 chapter 10th verse. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of the Lord. No, Hold you sure? Twelve. Uh, you eleven. Mark. Mark eleven. Eleven. Twelve, 12 through fourteen. Mark eleven twelve. Now, now the next day, when they had come out from Bethany, uh -huh. he was hungry. He was what? Hungry. He was what? Hungry. Pick up on that. Go ahead. And seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to it, Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. Now we're going to stop right there. Now I, now, now I want you to follow me and follow me well because I'm going to try to get what's in my spirit and try to get it out. Because, you know, sometimes we can read scripture 50 times and, and then, uh, then there becomes a light on you go, oh, well, well, now I see that. So, so I want you to understand something about the fig tree. And it's important that we, we learn something about the fig tree because I had to do a little research on this. And, uh, and it's important that we understand this. Now, number one. The way a fig tree grows, watch this, the fruit is first formed. What did I say? The fruit is first formed, then the leaves appear. The fruit is first formed, then the leaves appear. So one would expect to find satisfying fruit on a tree that is in full leaf. Here Jesus sees the beautiful fig tree. It is in full leaf. And I've showed you a picture of what a full leaf fig tree looks like. Jesus goes up to the tree because he's hungry and he wants to get a piece, a fig tree, a fig of this tree because it was it is telling him that it has fruit on it because it is in what? Full leaf. 
Normally, number two, normally when you read on it, it says uh, because there are different fig types of fig trees, it normally takes three to six years from planting a fig tree to actually see ripened fruit. And watch this, it is afterwards, it is called the full leaf. The leaves indicate that there is fruit on the tree. We're talking about a fig tree. Number three, the fig tree season to produce a crop is in the summer and fall season. Now they have, some trees only have one season to produce ripened fruit. Then it goes on to now, and then there's some that has two seasons. And the way I understand this, like it says summer and fall, then, it, and the one that has two seasons, theirs will come in June and July. Watch well, this, when Jesus went to the tree, the Bible says it was not the season. Let's read it again. And seeing from afar, a fig tree. Okay. Having leaves. Having leaves. We just got through talking about the fig tree when it's in full, in full leaf. That usually is telling you that there should be what? Fruit on the tree. He said he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found what nothing but leaves. And watch this. And then he goes into saying, for it was not the season for the figs. Now understand this. Just because it was not the season for uh, the figs to develop a extra to ripen and that, you know, usually this is when they pick them, it was ready and ripen, doesn't mean that it shouldn't have had any fruit on it. It doesn't mean because he showed up out of season that it shouldn't have had any fruit on it. Here, yeah. let me ask you what point it's Jesus trying to make in relations to the fig tree. So if Jesus was to come up to your fig tree, you, would you have fruit on your tree? Would you be having the fasana fasana that, listen, I got leaves on me. I go to church. I, I do everything I'm supposed to do on the outside. But, but, but as far as really having fruit, after we pull back the leaves, do you really have fruit on your tree? Or is your tree barren? There are certain reasons why this tree did not produce fruit. Huh? Now, Jesus is not telling us this story and presenting uh, the, this analogy of the fruit of the fig tree to us just to be cursing this fig tree uh, uh, just to be doing it. If you know anything about the ministry of Jesus, he didn't just do stuff just to be doing it. <laughs> always a purpose. There was always a purpose behind it. It is always a message for the believer. Always. Because, see, watch this. That's one thing that, that, that he's constantly trying to get over to the believer. He's trying to get keys in your hand. He's always trying to get keys uh, 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 in your hand. Why? So that you would be able to unlock the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Now, 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 if we choose to not focus and not hear what is being said today or what, whenever he's trying to push something our way and tell us things, then that's, guess who that's on? That's on you. And what's happening is then you, your fig tree is becoming, is that which is what? Barren, not bearing fruit. It gave the impression, it gave the picture that it was a, a tree that was full of fruit. But when he peeled it back, when he pushed back the leaves, it had nothing. 
and he was hungry and was not able to eat. Now let's look at the different reason I have here. Uh, I have four points on why the tree did not produce fruit. Number one, due to its environment. Number one is what? Due to its environment. Number one is what? Due to its environment. The surrounding or condition a person is in determines their growth. Right? Uh, you know, many times we you know, pick our friends and it's very important that you choose who you're going to buddy up with very wisely. Because, see, in order for this fig tree to come up and be successful and produce fruit, uh, it has to be in the right environment. It has to be. And when, for instance, if in our case, if we buddying up our environment, if we're putting ourselves around someone that's an unbeliever, and here we are saying that we are a believer, and then that's going to affect my what? Growth. Mm -hmm. Because I put myself, I'm constantly putting myself in an environment that is not productive uh, to the growth of my fig tree. And, and many people do this. And then watch this. There are some people uh, uh, put themselves in a religious environment as far as not so much as, as a word environment, but it's just that they put themselves in that type of environment and they're still not able to produce the proper, proper type of fruit. What environment are you putting yourself in and it is amazing uh if you have just put yourself in the environment of you know i'm going to just stick with of the traditions and i'm going to do this and i'm never coming out then guess what that's what you're going to produce your 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 your, your food is never going to ripen number two lack of nutrients the reason why the tree did not produce fruit because it lack nutrients. Nutrients is a substance that provide nourishment, essential for growth and the maintenance of life. To the believer, this would be water and food to us. So the believer, so what this is saying is that the believer, in order for this uh, tree to produce fruit, it's going to need water and food. You say, what do you mean? I'm going to need water and food. The Bible is very clear to us as to what is water. We know uh, when Nicodemus went to Jesus by night, he tells them uh, about water. You must uh, uh, get water. Now, water is symbolic of word. Now, understand, understand the gospel is hidden from those who are lost. So if you have to understand some of the terms and the term, terminologies that are used in the word. So when you come across water, we're talking about word. In order for you to live and be born again, you're going to need water and the spirit. The believer, in order for your fruit, when the leaves is pushed back, in order for you to produce a ripened fruit, you will need the word of God. Mm -hmm. The word of God satisfies all the nutrients, all the things that a believer needs. It is your source, the word of God. After you get the word of God, it will develop you. It will come in. It will give you faith. You cannot make it in this world without the word of God. I know that there's some people that think they can get around it. You know, some have this practice that says, you know what? I'm just going to listen to my pastor preach and then that's going to be good enough. And, you know, I won't have any diet throughout the week and I'm going to be good. I'm here to tell you, you are deceiving yourself. You know, the enemy specializes in deception. And, you know, <laughs> and I understand that. I, you know, I've been around it for years and I understand the deception because sometimes the enemy, you know, what he wants us to do is to, to do everything.
everything but here and get that word on the inside. Because he, he under that one thing the enemy do, does, he understands the effects of the word. You may not, but he knows what the word does. And so what he does is he likes to keep you busy. He likes to keep us distracted. He likes to keep us unfocused on the things of God. And see, when your mind is just not sound and it's constantly going here and easily wavered, the enemy loved that. The enemy loved for the believers to do nothing but shout. Mm -hmm. This idea you talk about shout. No, it's not the wrong shout. I love to shout too. But you know, <laughs> what the enemy wants you to do is I was listening, looking at a service the other day and I was looking forward to them getting to the word of God. And it was like an hour and 30 minutes. And, <laughs> and the whole time, all they were doing, boom, 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 boom. And, and it was just a constant, the, the whole hour and 30 minutes, they were trying to stop the people coming. Now we got to get to the word. And then somebody else just strike up and they just go into a shout. That whole service never had word. The enemy, I, I'm sure he was happy. And I'm sure what he says to himself is that, listen, if, if, I, can, if, if, if I can't stop them from getting saved, then my next, next best thing to do is to just keep them shouting. Because he understands that if you don't have nutrients, if you don't have water, if you don't have food, you will not be successful to do anything. You will not be able to do anything. Laziness will say, you know what, that's good. Next point, temperature. Temperature. The degree of intensity of heat present in a substance or object, especially as expressed according to a comparative scale and shown by a thermometer or perceived by touch. Temperature. Now, he now, now, now let me bring this home too, as far as the spiritual believer, the believer, uh, when it comes to spiritual matters, basically, are you hot or cold? Let's just bring it on there. Are you hot or are you cold? The desired temperature, this is the hot, is the desired temperature for the kingdom of God. If you will, go to Romans 3, not Romans, Revelations 3, 14 through 19. What is your temperature? Are you hot? Are you cold for Jesus? Huh? Do your friends know about you? Or do, wait a minute. How is your fruit when you're in the company of your friends? Let's see. Revelations 3, 14, 19 says. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. What? I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire. Now here, watch this now. Jesus is giving a, a, a solution, a remedy on how to fix it. <laughs> he said, what? I counsel you to what? I counsel you to yeah. buy from me gold uh -huh. refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous huh? and repent. Here, Jesus gives us a word. And I like how he gives a solution. He ain't just telling you, you know, he says, I counsel you. 
<laughs> he didn't have to do that, but he said, I counsel you to do this. He says, uh, uh, you you either going to be hot or cold. And he said, watch this, that lukewarm stuff, where you just going to be a part of both citizens, I mean, both kingdoms, I'm going to be a part of the world, and, you know, I'm going to have dual sort of citizenship here. I'm going to participate uh, in the world, and, and then I'm going to participate in the kingdom when I feel like it's good. And, and, you know, Jesus said, I consider that what? Lukewarm, and I will what? Spew you out. That ain't going to work. <laughs> Number four, stress. Stress, let's hear the definition for stress, what that is. Stress, pressure, or tension exerted on a material object. And watch this, I like this one because this one brings it on home to us. It says, a state of mind or emotional strain or tension resulting from adverse or very demanding circumstances. The devil gold is to keep the believer stressed out <laughs> till he is none effective. Uh, and you're saying, uh, you know, man, even, uh, and, and we always laugh because Miles Monroe always say, and you know it ain't working. <laughs> and you know it ain't working. And, and then you watch this when a circumstance come, uh, the believer is not supposed to be stressed out. We have remedies. We have a solution. We have keys for that <laughs> in the kingdom of God to deal with that. Uh, and so we are not supposed to be under the circumstances. Our Lord has provided a way for us to be victorious over every circumstance, every situation. We are supposed to be in control and overcomer. That is one of <clears throat> the things that the enemy, when Adam fell, we lost control over life circumstances, outcomes, having results of death. But when Jesus came, he connected us back to the source. So therefore, we have dominion over our circumstances. Huh? So you say, why? Why are we being pushed uh, to have fruit on our tree? Why is the fig tree uh, uh, not acceptable being barren? Why Why are we being pushed to have fruit on the tree? Because God wants us to be victorious over life circumstances, not being stressed out by the devil. I have here, let's read this particular scripture, Revelations 3, 20 through 22. I like this particular uh what Jesus says here, if you can't read that from me, Pastor. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Yeah. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. As I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who has an ear... To hear, let them hear. Are you an overcomer in life? Whatever the enemy brings your way, are you being victorious? Are you working at it? Are you laboring to enter into the rest of God? Or are you just laying down, letting the enemy defeat you at every end? That is not okay. That is not what this is all about. God wants us to be victorious and everything we put our hand to do. Now, this 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 particular, I just read off to you, I, I uh, presented to you four uh, different points on uh, how a, a tree can become barren and, and not produce fruit. We said what number one was what uh, due to its environment, and number two was what lack of nutrients, and number three was what temperature, and number four was stress. Now, this now. This moves into, let's move into the next teaching point that the Lord Jesus is making out of this trick. After this, Jesus cursed the tree, we know. So Jesus went into Jerusalem and there he cleansed the temple after that event. Let us pick up with what happened 
because Jesus spoke some words to that tree and he said, let, and what he said, let, right? No one eat fruit from you ever again. He spoke that out of his mouth. And so here the disciples, we're going to pick up at the 20th verse because we're going to see that Jesus' words is begun to be effective and it's going to do just what he sent it to do. So let's see what, what happens here. 20th verse, we're going to read 20 through what? 24. Let's read the book. Now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. They saw the fig tree what? Dried up from the roots. Ah. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you curse has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Wait, 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 right there. Now listen, listen, I'm wanting you to follow me because guess what? Jesus is about to have another teachable moment because guess what? He spoke to the tree. Uh, and, and now the tree, uh, he's cursed the tree, and now they're wanting to know how did this happen because they went somewhere, and now they came back, and Jesus' faith quickly worked. And watch as this tree is dried up from the root. How, how did this happen? And they're as, as astonished at this. Here Jesus is wanting to teach them something, and he says, have faith in God. Huh? He says what? Have faith in have God. Have faith in God. Because, see, he's about to teach them now because they have saw the tree and is dead. He's about to teach them that, listen, if you were a productive tree like Jesus is, you're going to be able to do some things. If you had, if he would have went, if you, if I come to your tree and you're, you have fruit on your tree and you're productive, listen, this is what you're going to be able to do. And he said, listen, have faith in God. Watch this. 23rd. For assuredly, I say to you. Yes. Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things ye ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Here Jesus is teaching them a method on how to be overcomers and how to be above their circumstance and how to have whatever they want and whatever they say. He's telling them that, listen, that if I say to you, whosoever should say to this mountain, that believer that bears fruit, you should be able to say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea with just your words. And does not doubt in his heart. Now, 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 doubt. Now, understand, a lot of times with doubt, that comes from having misformed information. When your information that you build in your, your house on is, is not correct, he said, and doesn't, and that causes doubt. He said, watch this, and does not doubt in his heart, go, and it says, but believes. But believes. When you've been told some things, you believe the gospel. You believe the word of God. Watch this. And the only way you're, you're going to start believing is when you get that word in you. You get that nutrient in you. And when your fruit begins to develop and you begin to nourish it, that's the only way you're going to believe. And it says, believe that those things he says, it will be done. He will have whatever he says. Then he goes on. He's teaching them now. He said, therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe. Believe. Now I'm here to tell you, on my journey here of learning the things of God, I understand and I, I realize that believing is more harder than you think it is. <laughs> you know, we, we hear something the preachers say and all, but see, the way this works, the kingdom works, you got to believe it. You may have heard somebody say something. You go, yeah, I believe it. But you you, you got to get that thing in your heart. Believe in your heart. You. 
And believing it really is harder than what you think it is. Heck, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I believe a, a large portion of the body of Christ don't believe a lot of things in the Bible. They hear it and they mentally uh, uh, agree that it is true. But do they have? Do they believe it in their heart? See, I'm not going to tell you that I don't really believe that. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> but you got to have it for yourself. Jesus is given the formula. Uh, he, he's teaching us. He says, therefore, I say, wherever you ask when you pray, believe, believe that you receive them and you will have them. And it's amazing how the heart will really let you know. You ain't going to tell nobody that you don't believe it. It's going to tell you. You ain't got that. Go dig deeper. How you dig deeper, you got to apply the word of God. The word of God gives you the knowledge and understanding as to the word of God. And watch this, and it will flush out unbelief. We are saturated in the kingdom of many of us in the world. We are saturated with unbelief. <laughs> I know it's hard to believe. <laughs> That's hard to kind of wrap your head around. Many of us are saturated with unbelief. See, watch this. We're having to deal with the things of the world. We got our experiences, things that we believe that we know that happened to us. I know I didn't get that. I know that if you do this, you ain't going to get that. We think we know, right? And so so it's hard uh, to come out of a, a platform of unbelief. That's got to be dug. You got to dig down that deep. The Holy Ghost got to help you with that, and that's his job. The Holy Ghost got to get you out of that. Let me move on just a little bit further, and I'm almost out of here. I want to look at one last parable. Because many of the believers take what they have for granted. Uh, you know, we live in the world, and we tend to just go right over spiritual matters and and it's very difficult sometimes to apply it to our life. And especially when we are living in a day of social media, and if you own it all day, <laughs> you really got a problem. And I was thinking about it one day, how the Lord had me to see one day. I had done a study, you know, my ministry is dealing with the youth as far as uh, uh, putting out uh, ministry resources. And the Lord said, when I was reading one time, it talks about children are giving six to six to nine hours a day, putting that much time into social media, where their mind is one thing, other things of the world, and and actually, what's happening? They are developing in the world system, and why should they are applying six to? And some of them do a lot, more, probably longer than what I'm saying. And, and watch this. And then, we, you know, we have kingdom kids and we have children in the kingdom. Uh, their parents will fight somebody like me trying to tell them, you know, you need to teach the children. You, you, you know, okay, yeah. yeah. And they have not applied 20 minutes a day versus, can, I want you to see this, 20 minutes versus what? Six hours. With, you didn't even choose it. Nobody did this over here to 20 minutes right here. And, but they get allow them to have a good six hours over here. Now, who do you think going to win? Who do you think going to win? <laughs> yeah, who do who, who you think going to win? And, and then, you know, that's a plug for my book. I, I, I love to push that. Daily Youth Devotion. Because I'm about having kingdom kids. <laughs> who do you think going to win? Now, we multiply, let's say six times, six times seven is 42 hours. And then you wouldn't even let your child have daily youth devotion. Yeah, I don't feel like doing that. Okay, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. But you never made your flesh move. And guess what? Those seeds sow. Yes, they do. They produce a crop. Yes, they do. They coming back. Yes, they do. <laughs> and, and you know what? You think, well, I couldn't do it. I couldn't make my kid. Yes, you could have. Mm -hmm. You could have. You could have said, sit down. <laughs> I want to watch you read. I want to watch you watch that. I want to do that. We really do what we want to do in a day. Let me move on. Y'all know I can get stuck there. <laughs> I can get stuck there. Now watch this. Let's move to Luke, the 16th chapter, 1 to 13. I want us to get something out of here. I want I, It's going to pull everything together. Because I want to read this so you all can be able to see this particular parable. Let's go in, Pastor. Can you get the King James Version for me? Uh, New King James. No, I want the King James because they're saying something in there that I really want to pull out. 
I want it on the King James Version. So I want, there's a, the eighth verse, I really, it's saying something, and I think everybody would be able to understand it a little better for me. And all. Stick with me here, y'all. Luke 16. 16, 1 through 13. It's here. We're dealing with the unjust steward. And he said unto his disciples, There was a certain rich man which had a steward. And the same was accused unto him that had wasted his goods. They called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship. For thou mayest be no longer steward. Now understand that word steward means that he was manager over his goods. <coughs> okay. All right. Move on. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig. To beg I am ashamed. I am resolved what to do. That when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his Lord's debtors unto him and said unto the first, How much owest thou unto my Lord? And he said, An hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. Then said he to another, And how much owest thou? And he said, An hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and write four score. Now I want you to pay attention to this next verse. Because understand, this steward is moving on the wisdom of the world. Understand that. So let's read what the Lord commended him on. Read it. And the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. Now, let's think up for a minute. What an accusation. Now, this one here is one of those scriptures that, you know, parables you can read and, you know, you may not get it at first and you just kind of go, okay, well, okay. I don't want you to hear me today. Now, the Lord commended the unjust, and he said, the Lord, you know, he's the one that's over him. He says, he commended the unjust steward because you had done, he said, because he had done wisely, all right? Because he had done wisely, he put the scheme together. He was, this according to the world system, uh, this is what you do. And he played them real good, did he not? He, you come here, you know, give me, write me a check for this. And making himself look good, did he not? He made himself look good, did he not? Mm -hmm. He made, because he called different ones in there, you do this and you write me a check. Boom, 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 ooh, he's good. He, he gave, you know, that if that was me, that really would work. He gave me a discount, <laughs> right? Gave me a major discount, 50% off. Woo! We like him. Yes, right? And this is what this unjust uh, uh, a steward did. And watch this. He makes a statement here. Watch this. He says, this is, he says, for the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. What is he saying? What is he saying? Many times in the world, we are willing to progress with the world. We are willing to, if you notice in each discipline, they have gotten better. They have, you take basketball. I remember they used to just play on the streets and blah, blah, blah. Now they have leagues, right? Uh, and they have, uh, in each uh, field, you know, they got leagues and, you know, they got games over here. They teaching those kids. They way better than what they used to be back in the day. They very developed. And this can, and also this goes on in practically every discipline they have figured out how to develop and get better and better in each area of the world, right? And then when it comes, watch this though, when it comes to the children of light, we still want to stay in the old time mm. way. Come on here. And think that's good. I'm here to tell you that the kingdom of God is also a growing a, a, a method, of, it's a method of learning, and it is to be a progressive in learning and getting better. By now, we should be more advanced in the things of God today. He said here, for the children of the world, 
are in their generation, and watch this, the children of the world has gradually, over and over, from generation to generation, has made things wicked and wicked and figured out stuff how to do. But when watching many says, more a generation wiser than the children of light, we who are believers sometimes refuse to grow in the things of God. We are slow. We think that's okay. Think it's okay. We think that's okay. We're saying, listen, healing, Jesus already provided healing of the believers. We can all, this is for all of us. Why are we not developed? We said, here Jesus is telling us, have faith in God. We should be moving mountains, but we are slow. Uh, and then he said, listen, listen, then watch this. Thing. You got some believers, they still just trying to not even bear fruit. Slow. Children of light are more ignorant in moving and progressive, progressing in the things of God. That's why we're here. That's why on social media, you got all type of confusion. You got folks out there that think that they can uh, play in the world and they can do sin and they can continue to do this thing and never wanting to pull up to, to what the status and what the, 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 the method is for the kingdom of heaven and for the things of God. They don't want to their flesh. They are not willing to give up their flesh and walk in the spirit. Children of God are less wiser than even the world. Let's see what Jesus says about it. And this is, he telling you about, about how to work in the world system. <laughs> he, 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 this is what he says. And I say unto you, what? Make to yourself friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when ye fail, uh -huh. they may receive you into everlasting habitation. Now, this is what somebody who's in the world system, this is what you would do. He tells you, listen, this is what you, you want to be wise in the world system. This is what you would do. Read the book. He says, he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. Therefore, ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches. And if ye have not been unfaithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? Now, 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 he's saying, listen, 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 listen. You are not faithful in the little things. Why would I give you the true riches? Why would I give you the keys to the kingdom? Why would I teach you how to unlock the things where your circumstances, where you'll be in control of your circumstances? Why, if you are not interested in the things of God, why would I give you the keys to unlock the things of God <laughs> where you'll have, where you'll be an overcomer if you ain't thinking about the things of God? Why would I do that? <laughs> Read the book. And if you have not been faithful huh? in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters. What? <laughs> no servant can serve two masters. Can't do it. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. The God says here, the scripture says, listen, if you're not going to serve mammon, you know, you 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 working for them coins, <laughs> and that's where your mind is, and and then you ain't gonna be able to serve God too. It just ain't gonna happen. And God won't give you the true riches to the kingdom of God. You will not be able to bear fig fruit. You will not get what man. You will have the leaves. You can shout and tear up the floor. You can have the language. Have you ever met somebody out there that they got good language? I know he can do it. I know all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. And then you, you follow them home and see, <laughs> they bear. But they got the language. They got the leaves. That's making it think, making us think, whoa, this person really have fruit underneath. But I'm here to tell you, God want us to develop fruit. He wants us to be able to work the method that he has left to the body of Christ. 
He wants us to be able to learn what the method is to be able, he's telling us to develop in our belief so we can speak to the mountain and command it to be moved and it shall move for you. Why? Because you have developed, you have developed the fig tree, your fig tree, and guess what? It is bearing fruit. Praise be to God for his marvelous work. Now, they, I'm going to pray. There may be someone that here today and uh, you have heard the message and you want to move. You want to grow in the Lord. You know what? The good thing about uh, the, the, your tree, the fig tree, and if you're still here, you got time to still nourish it. Get that tree back on track. You still got time. Many of us are yet young. I used to, I put my name in there, us. <laughs> Many of us are yet young and we can do this. Amen. While you're here on the earth, you still got time. Go with me. Father, we just bless you today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the truth. We thank you, Lord, that you're opening up our eyes that we might see the glorious light of what you have done for us. We thank you for giving us your son during this season. We thank you. We do not neglect and, uh, and neglect the things that you have done. You've given your son for us. Why? He came that we might have life. He died on the cross for us. So that he bore our sins, Lord, and he bore our sickness. Why? So that we can be victorious in this life. Now, anybody out there today that are going through anything, Lord, we, we ask that you give them understanding. We take authority over every uh, attack of, on the families today and anybody that's going through mental attack in their mind. Hallelujah. Right now, we take authority over that in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We touch and agree, agree against anything that's coming against you in your situation. And right now, we just give you praise, God, that we're victorious in whatever we put our hand to do. And we thank you, God. We speak blessings over and uh, increase over those who are going through financial situations during this, situ during this season. Lord, we ask that you increase them financially. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you, God, that you will open up the doors and the windows as they continue to uh, plant the seeds, financial seeds in you, Lord. And with those who are going through anything, attacks in their body, we take authority over you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. We rebuke your attack on the body. We rebuke a uh, coughing and a uh, 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 attacks uh, mm -hmm. on uh, in the nasals. Hallelujah. Allergies. We re rebuke a uh, knees uh, condition and attack on the physical bones. And we bind that in the name of Jesus. For we are healed. We are the healed. And we stand on your word, Father, that you have given to us. For you sent your word and you healed us. And we thank you, God. We stand on your word that we healed. And we praise you, God, that we who are living epistle, we will continue to grow in your word. We will be that example. We will not be the, those children of light that did not push to do things better. But here at living epistle, we're going to push to get the things of God, that which the kingdom of God has given to the believers, that we have taken possession what is ours and we say in Jesus mighty name somebody say amen amen God bless, you. bless the Lord bless the Lord bless the Lord I trust that you enjoyed that word I know I did and first lady I'm gonna tell you I'm stealing that one <laughs> <laughs> I got the notes already amen I'm taking that one but amen we bless God for his word on today we thank God for what he has done and what he is yet doing. Just a few more things and we are going to let you go for today. At this time now, we want to recognize those who are tithers who support this ministry, who support Living Epistle. And if it is that time for you to tithe and to make your confession, I ask that you would join me in our statement of faith that we say when we share, give our tithe. And with that said, we will, say, we will say this responsibly. Father, we rejoice in all the good which you have given to us and to our household. We have heard your voice and have done according to all you have commanded. Now, Father, look down from your holy habitation in heaven and bless us as you say it in your words. Father, we believe that we now receive your blessing according to your word. 
this is our confession of faith in Jesus' name. I believe I receive the windows of heaven blessings. And I thank you, Father, for rebuking the devourer for my sake. I thank you that his hands are tied concerning my money. And for everyone else that's given an offering, we have a prayer of faith that we say over our offering. So with that said, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to take part in the building of your kingdom by sowing this seed offering. Your word teaches he was so sparingly, shall also reap sparingly, and he was so bountifully, shall reap also bountifully. I purpose in my heart to give freely and cheerfully, for this is what you love. Now I look forward to your grace abounding towards me so that I will have all sufficiency in all things abounding to every good work. Everyone that agrees with that prayer, say amen. We'd like to thank God for all that he has done. Thank God for all of you that are in the viewing audience. Amen. As we approach the end of 2021 and approaching the beginning of 2022, we want you to be encouraged in the things of God. We want you to be motivated in the things of God. God has kept you one more year. He's kept your family. He's kept everything for you. And amen. And for some, he has opened doors. Amen. During times of difficulty. So as we go into the new year and in this one year, amen, let us go forth with praise and worship and a sense of gratefulness within our hearts because of what he has done. And amen. And we look forward to seeing you Amen again. And just want to remind you about our Bible study and our Sunday morning worship service on next Sunday. And amen. And until next time, God bless you. And we'll see you at that time.